Hi, today we'll be reviewing an article by Lachlan Cash, who works for Microsoft in Seattle. The article describes safety stock journal concepts. Lachlan Cash is an owner of OrganicAx.com, which is a famous blog for anything dynamics. So what is safety stock level journal? Safety stock level journal looks over historical demand per specific time frame and comes up with a minimum level quantity required. To use safety stock level functionality in Dynamics 365, we have to use master planning module. One thing to be mindful that the placement of the form has changed. In X2005, the form was located under journal. In Dynamics 365, the form is located under master planning tab and under run tab. I'm going to open safety stock calculation form and I will create a new safety stock journal. The first thing you have to do before creating this journal is to make sure that the safety stock journal type is created in the system. In my case it is, I'm going to select my safety stock journal type. I'm going to have my description as a demo description. To add safety stock journal lines, you have to use create lines functionality. This is where you determine your date range and the product that you want to perform safety level calculation for. In my case, the date range is set to a year, 12 months, and the item is set to L0050. I'm going to click OK, and we can see that the line has been created. We can see that the current minimum set to this product is set to 4. If I scroll down to the line details, the information that we're interested in is our average issues per month, our average issues per lead time, and our lead time. The lead time in this form is our purchase lead time set on the product. How did the system came up with average issues per month set to 025? Let's look at our release product L0050 and its historical data. We can see that there are only two transactions for this product. One was a quantity 3 issued and one quantity 3 received. The lines that we're interested in is our issues. For simplification of the process, I picked the product that has only one deduct transaction. So the number is three. So we can say that per 12 months, we only had three issues. So let's have our three, which is total quantity of issues per given period of time, and divided by 12. And this is how we get our average issues per month, 0 0.25. And you can see in this form in the line details that average issues per month is set to 25. How the system came up was the second number, our average issue per lead time. So to validate that information, you have to go to your default order settings and verify your purchase lead time on the product. In our case, it's set to five. So to get our average issues per lead time, we have to perform the following calculation. The number of days in the month is 30 divided by our lead time, which is five, we get the number six. So then 0 0.25, our average issues per month, we divided by six and we get the number 0 0.04. An average issues per lead time is the number of stock that we need to carry us through the lead time. In our case, it's 004. The next step is to calculate the proposal. There are two types of proposals that we can do. One is using average issues per lead time, and the second one is using our service level. We'll be talking about service level in the second part of this video. In our case, the average issues per lead time number is insignificant. So just to get a different number, I'm going to multiply our average issues per lead time for sell them. A real life scenario for this case might be Christmas time where you have higher demand than usual. So in our case, we expect a thousand percent increase in sales for this particular item. So now we can see that the current minimum that was set for the product was four and the calculated minimum that we just calculated is set to 42. Then there's a third column, which is our new minimum. This is where you can change the data before posting it. So how do we came up with 42? The calculation is fairly simple. We take our original average issues per lead time and multiply it by 1,000. This is how we got the number 42. So let's try to post the 42. So new minimum quantity is set to 42. I'm going to click post. So now if I go to my item coverage form for item L0050, I can see that the new minimum set is 42. Now let's talk about the second calculation type, which is our service level. Otter describes only one service level calculation that can be performed to determine the percentage. I've done some Googling and I found that there are different methods to perform service level calculations. The idea behind service level percentage is that the higher the number is, the greater is the safety factor. And what I mean by that, if a service level is set to 99%, this product carries a really high cost of stock out. Before you use service level calculation, you need to make sure that the standard deviation of issues per month is calculated. 
So let's calculate our proposal using service level for our product. So I'm going to click on the use service level. For service level, we have our predefined value. So I'm going to select 99. By selecting 99, I'm telling the system that this is a class A item and it's really important to me. I'm going to click OK. And we can see that the calculated minimum was suggested for us, which is 1. I suggest you do more reading in Wikipedia on how to calculate your service level. And this will conclude our demo for today. Thank you for watching and we'll be seeing you soon.